All right, everybody, welcome back to Gimme Film Festival. I hope you all love that screening of Tapeworm. We're sitting here with the directors, Milos and Fabian. Um, and uh, hey, guys. Well, hey. So, uh, wow, what an amazing movie. Um, what do you want people to know right after watching your film? Right after watching it. Um... Yeah. It's a good question. I think, what, what do I want people to know? Um, probably that you can make a movie for, for, very, for very low amount of money um, and it can be done. I mean, I'm sure people know that already, but um, you know, if you really want to do it and we really wanted to make uh, a film, a feature, and uh, we were trying our hardest to be, uh, you know, unstoppable with uh, when, when it came to odds of, of how are we gonna do this? What are we gonna do? You can do it. Inspired. <laughs> Be inspired <laughs> to make movies. I right guess. On. So you made this for next to nothing. I guess so, yeah. I mean, a lot of volunteer efforts from a great crew of friends and family and, um, and actors uh, who are really good, who we're really good friends with. Um, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to, to touch on that a bit. I thought Alex Atia was so great in this film. Like um, when she fell down those stairs, I don't know if that was supposed to be funny, but I laughed so hard at that part. I don't, does that make me a bad person? It, I mean, I, what did you say to you? I was hoping, yeah, I don't know. I was hoping that people would laugh at how tragic her life, her situation was, I guess. So like in that, yeah, it was probably intentful, but yeah, I kind of, I was hoping that people would laugh, otherwise it would be awkward, yeah. I mean, the movie itself is supposed to be about when your life, when life kind of sucks sometimes and things just really crappy things happen, sometimes you just laugh at how horrible things get. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of what it's like. Like if, you know, if something really bad happens and it's very sad and you're very sad and then you see like somebody after something really terrible happens and then you're very sad and then you go outside to go to your car and then you notice somebody smashed all your windows or something. <laughs> it, it just got laugh. worse. Yeah, yeah, it just got even worse. And it's kind of like that sort of kind of thing. So it's kind of uh, in that vein, it's yeah, comedic in that vein. Good. How are you guys enjoying COVID-19? Speaking of comedic in that vein. Um, exactly like before, uh, what I was saying before, I, I, there was a lot of laughing at myself and how sad things kind of <laughs> got, but, uh, I kind of liked it. I, I just sat at home and I have been sitting at home and, and just kind of doing not much waking up at weird times, staying up till four in the morning. Uh, I like it. I'm a fan of the lifestyle that I have now. I don't know. What yeah, I was, I was loving, uh, I was in Serb for a while. I, I not, so I don't think I can keep applying, but uh, for a while I was living it. Um, just watching movies all day, like like three, four movies a day. In, in Amazing. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, I mean, the tragedy yeah. was happening, but, you know, personal, on a personal level, it was... I don't want to go back to do anything else. Yeah, well, maybe they'll, they'll institute income and then you can get your SERP check every month. Yeah, and watch movies yeah and... I, I hope for that. Uh, universal income, that'd be great. Yeah. Yes, yes, please. I think that would be <laughs> awesome for everybody, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, you guys, you know, you're young filmmakers in Winnipeg. You're like the new generation of people trying to make movies. But you also, I mean, I know... Milos, you teach a bit and uh, you guys edit um, for other people sometimes. And what what does a young filmmaker have to do to survive in Winnipeg in 2020? We're in 2020, yeah, just collect serve, I guess. But <laughs> I don't know. Like, but yeah, like you need that time. You gotta make time. Like either, I don't know what it is, like either work on set and then the set, I guess, pays quite a bit that you can probably take up enough time off that you can just 
do movies, but you gotta get that balance of free time and enough money, which we were getting served. It's interesting though to say that because I mean, I've read a meme that is very true and it's, uh, it says something like, all of that free time you wanted, you finally got it. Did you- I know, I, I, we didn't do anything. I mean, we <laughs> called each other, me and Fabian called each other all the time and every week there was a new project that we we're going to do. We we're going to start a company and then no, we're going to make a movie. Let's make this movie. Actually, let's go do this movie. And then every week there's a new idea. And then there's another meme I saw that said, um, my, uh, my project, like my ambition for my project getting sidewinded by uh, the ambition to do another project. So it was a lot of that. It was a lot of like yearning to- A lot of scheming, a lot of dreaming and scheming and not a whole lot of um, actual getting down to it, I guess. But yeah. don't be too hard on yourself. I think filmmakers have always kind of been in that category of sometimes it takes a few sort of flaky, half-baked ideas that don't really um, lift off before you get the one that does like tapeworm. Yeah. I got a question for you, Gnome and yeah. Fabian. Uh, I had this thing ever since I started making movies, I had this feeling of like, uh, that when you make a movie, you put so much heart and soul into it. Like how we did with Tapeworm. We spent a whole year making this movie and you, then you spend a long time editing it and then you kind of finish it. And if you don't have a project on the go as you're finishing it, you kind of sit there and you go, am I a filmmaker anymore? Um, that's how I kind of feel. It's kind of like you have to keep making movies to keep that filmmaker kind of moniker almost. And that's what kind of scares me. It's kind of like, I got to make another movie because if I don't make another movie, then, then I got to, you know, then I'm not like, you know, participating in my process and, and in the art itself. Um, that's like the fear that I always have. So it's like, as soon as a movie's done, usually we'll, you know, there's like a month period where I'm like, I got to think of another idea. I got to think of another idea. I got to think of another idea kind of thing. Um, I don't know. Do, do you guys have that at all? Like this, this, like, it's like an escaping thing of making movies because it's done and then you make a new one and then you got to make another one, so on and so forth. Well, I think it's a bit of an addiction is what you're trying to say. And exactly. uh, just to listen to you talking about it, I feel like I need to put you in exactly. filmmakers detox. Yeah. And to start with your detox, Milos, I want to psychically extract you from your background mm -hmm. because of your shirt. And I don't want to put you in this background over here. I want to just pan my camera over here to this. <laughs> Look at that. It matches your shirt. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? I think that's really cool. It's like very similar. That great Greg style. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways i know i didn't really answer your question but don't be too hard on yourself um you know you you can take a uh, a bit of thoughtful time every time you make a movie you learn so much and it doesn't it doesn't the lessons don't apply immediately sometimes you have to really kind of ingest that stuff and, and let it all pass through you it can take years sometimes but um you know you, why don't you just join the 48 hour film festival Exactly, or the one take super eight or something. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking of doing something fun. Not, like that. not everything has to be like a major domo kind of, you know, feature film shot on sixteen by the city yeah. of your pants. But you know, you did it, yeah. and it was amazing. So yeah. I want to congratulate you guys. Exactly. Uh, well, I wish we were like in Gimli on the, uh, you know, that nice kind of uh, balcony that they have there, where we got to have the type of party. That would be nice. Yeah. Maybe next year. Well, you went to Gimli last weekend. This past Did you? Week. Yeah. Like, yeah, two years ago. Yeah. What was it like? It was beautiful. I wish yeah. I was I wish the festival was happening in person. I always yeah. look forward to it and it just keeps getting better and better, I think. So yeah. So props to everybody involved in Gimli, I'd have to say, because it's my favorite festival for sure. And it's something I circle on the calendar past three years, I've always circled it on the calendar months in advance and calling Fabian and saying, hey, let's book a hotel for Gimli, like in January. <laughs> and where then he's like, like, where do you- And then we don't, and then it's so sad. Well, we usually stay like, 
we'll we'll get a cabin. Last year we got a cabin. The year before, I think we got like, the same cabin with James and um, Karen. Yeah, and then uh, uh, the year before that, I didn't have a place to stay, so I slept on the floor in the projectionist room. And then the year before okay. that, I was like a projectionist, I think. So uh, it, it's it's great, much much more evolved than it was uh, prior in the two, like 2010 was the first time I ever played at Gimli and, and uh, they've done so much with it since, since then. Um, and that was really cool to even play there back then. But even now, so for the younger filmmakers who are just starting out who get in, it's like really awesome. Um, I mean, they got Greg Turkington and Tim Heidecker this year, which is like crazy. I think that's very cool. Um, I was very excited when I heard that news. Okay, boys, is there anything else you want to say to your GFN, uh, GFF fans? Uh, no, uh, thank you for watching. I yeah, guess there's BFF watching. and GFF, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, thanks for watching. And uh, if you want to watch it again, it's on Amazon Prime. Amazing. Congrats on that. Yeah, thank you. Okay, guys. All right. I'm going to click N now. All right. All right. Thanks for having us. Okay. Ciao. Yeah. See ya.